guys welcome to my channel i am nancy p nancy petmark and this is my first video so today i'm going to talk about prayer i ain't no preacher i ain't no ordained anything but i have a few tips a few advice on prayer stick up to the end of the video and, <coughs> and i'm going to tell you all about that prayer ninini what is prayer some may say it's the genuine outpouring of your heart to a great listener and the great listener is god your maker some may say it's the lifting up of the heart and the mind to God the Father through His Son Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. That can be found in Romans chapter 8 verse 26 or through to 27. It's a little bit cold up here. Alafu, don't mind the lighting. Kunavile, this lighting is a bit work. I'm using natural light. It's too dark because it's about to rain and yeah, just don't mind, just listen. I am very bad at like memorizing the Bible verses. I'm so sure I convenience in kwanga wapi. Prayer can be silent, it can be in public places, private places, public places, places. It can be in public places, yes, when you're praying in your heart. Calling upon the name of God, especially in deep, you kind of want to, to, to pray. So praying, like, it's in very different ways and forms. For me, praying is talking to God. I know you pray and you have ever prayed. Let's know that when you pray, you develop a relationship with God. Vile tu unaungianga na rafiki yako and the more you communicate the better is the same way we should communicate with our heavenly father. How often should we pray? The Bible tells us to pray always. In the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17, we are advised to pray often. God wants us to talk to him all the time in the same way or the same breath your sister or friend or whoever does not stay long without hearing your voice that's how god wants us to talk to him and that's basically prayer where are we advised to close our eyes when praying is it really that serious it's kind of okay to close your eyes when praying because one uh kuna distractions mingi so there are very many very many distractions when you open your eyes for me nikifungua macho chat everything begins to get funny kunaanza kuona watu wanapik mapua zao when we are praying we are in the presence of the lord ku avoid ibo ni heri tu ufunge macho uende kwa presence ya god with respect how should we pray how should we pray first i want to categorize this question into four adoration thanksgiving repentance and petition remember in the bible when the disciples asked jesus how to pray jesus said we should pray like this our father who art in heaven Hallowed be thy name. Mm -mm -mm. You know that. You know it. Atakama huombangi. Sana na jua. At least you know the Lord's prayer. Let's dive in adoration. Adoration is paying honor to God. To honor God because not because unam chocha ni ju he is. You are you because he is atana na matiatrix zangu tell him he's your creator he's your maker he's your everything because you start the lord's prayer with our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name 
you have adored God by saying, Hallowed be thy name. Adore God because he's the most high God, the living God. He is the King of kings, Lord of lords. You, you know, you get what I'm trying to say. Repentance is the remorse or regret of sin, you know, and it's not only just regretting that you have sinned, it's also acknowledging that you have sinned. You know, you can regret that tena So it's remorse and deep regret at the same time it's the acknowledgement of sin wanting to not do that sin yet again we repent because our god is holy obviously from the moment adam ate the fruit yeah excuse me. from the moment adam ate the fruit we automatically became sinners we were prone to sin like in the book of first john chapter let me see, let me see, let me see. okay i can't remember the verse quite well but i'll put it it's i'll put it down below it tells us if we say we are not sinners then we are deceiving ourselves many a times we go to god in prayer asking and asking and asking not remembering that he is holy and our sins somehow creates a rift between us and God. I am a sinner, you are a sinner. No matter how you sin, we all sin differently, my dear. We often like point fingers to the people who sin, the sins that can be seen, sins that can be seen. Sema <laughs> poetry. Now to neza like who are entitled to say, oh, nanini, malaya, oh, sijui, nani, ubuta, nini. But you also sin, just that your sin, in hayoni kanangu, nafanyanga, mafichoni. Si poa one kujaju watu, si poa two kupoint fingers. We go to God in repentance, and therefore we receive forgiveness. In the book of Psalms, chapter, this one I like it, chapter 19, verse 12 to 14 this is a very good prayer that you can pray for god to reveal to you the sins that are lacking in your heart because never feel too sinful to ask god to forgive you kitambo nilikuwa na feel hivyo like ah nimefanya madhambi mingi sana siwezi enda kuomba god msamaha and that's the whole point jesus came repentance makes us clean even before the presence of god in prayer As john the baptist asked people to repent so that they may make way for the lord we need to make way for god to do his great deeds in our lives i know sai mshashika point yangu there's no point of keeping on going on to ingia kwa petition Petition is asking the Lord for things that we need. I'm sure we are all familiar with petition. God is our provider. It's our right, everyone's right as human beings to ask the Father to do things for us. We often ask God for things and forget to thank Him. How about we exchange our petition with praise? Unakumbukaka kaka wimbo ka paula sana maliomba ako kawimbo yeah they they praised god even at a time they would be complaining why they in that situation they in that situation because of spreading the word of god even after being whipped and even after being put in prison they still praised god and god heard them and there was a great earthquake that made the doors of the prison to open take for instance even uh david david is a very good example i love david because he has his story teaches me to have a personal relationship with god there is a something in the bible i'm going to write it here he also praised the lord and after that even in the other chapter they write after that david conquered Da, 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 and that whole story. We are living in a time when everything is quick fix. Everything is chop chop. When we pray for something, you don't want to go through crazy things like that. You want to go straight to the point. Oh God, help me with this. Help me with that job. Help me with this and this. It's like 
it sounds like too much work. I also feel like hey, yani ni hadi ni praise bado na nafani ni ask chenye nataka. And how can we praise the Lord by lifting his name high, by making him know that even though I'm in this situation you're still God. Doubt kills everything. We are told constantly to trust the Lord. Unaombea kitu alafu unaanza kuuliza maswali. Yet the Lord tells us to trust him. Matthew 6 verse 25 all through to 31. Please bear with me. I have to read this. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more worth than food and your body more worth than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They do not plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you far more, aren't you far more valuable to Him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment? Mark chapter 11 verse 24. It says, I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you have received it, it's yours. Now, I would like you to replace the you with your name. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 31, things as this. If God is for us, who can be against us? It goes on and it says, Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for all our sins, won't he also give us everything else? We should not only just ask the Lord, we should also believe. Replace your doubt with trust. Many a times when we board a car, for, for instance, at a Duthi, we trust that we'll get home safely to the point where you sleep. Imagine that level of trust in prayer. If you can trust a driver to get you home, and that is mere flesh and blood. If you can trust that when you sit on a chair in an event, that's the amount of trust that we should have when we pray for something. Na unanga, ni kama, ata kama pia mi uchoka sa zingine, umeombea kitu alafu na choka. Nasema, ata iwak. And sometimes you want it right there and then. We want it chap chap. We want to pray by the moment you open your eyes, you have it. Jesus told us that our Father knows the things that we want even before we pray. You just have trust in God. There are so many things that we have received even without praying. Somebody can ask, Basimbonasi Womba. Bus. He wants to build a relationship, he wants to get close to you and that's why it's important to pray and constantly talk to God. Can you imagine if your provider could only give you money and never ever get concerned? Kama ni dawari analipa tu ataki kushubulika, ataki kukaa the event, ataki kujua nani unaolewa na ye. Una imagine that kind of life. Alafu never ever 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 compare your prayers with somebody else's prayers. Simply because you are praying for the same thing and one person did not receive it, it can't nullify your prayers. Like God does not work that. When you write down your prayers, it also makes you give thanks to God. Let's get to thanksgiving. Do not attribute your success to education, to beauty, to wisdom. Pia we kuwa msuku, unafau thank God when msuku unitokea hivu. He never even consulted you to look the way you are looking. Ange ni consult. He, ange tu consultingi. Hatunge mpea breaks. Thank God for everything we have. Ata juya imaji. When your earthly provider provides you with something, you say thank you. When somebody blesses you or gives you words of blessings, you say thank you. When something happens for you, you say thank you. You say thank you, thank you, thank you. Kama unezambia your earthly people thank you, how much will God 
love you to say thank you Let, let's just look at the basic thing Ata tusiangalie material things the life that he has given you the fact that you have every part of your body and if you don't the fact the fact that you have sanity of mind that you can think straight and make decisions the fact that you have one another like the people around you you that you have more than enough to give thanks to god i would advise you to go sit down write uh the things that you thank god for and you will be amazed how much they are when you compare with the petitions that you want God to pass. Praising God should be sincere. It, it shouldn't be like a blackmail, like I'm praising God. Lakini, even divo inafa, Hannah. Hannah prayed for a son and she promised that when she gets that son, she's going to dedicate him to the Lord's work. Many people may ignore the fact that she got other kids after Samuel because the Lord blessed her after she prays. In first Samuel you'll find Hannah's long prayer of thanksgiving. Intertwine your petition with praise and very many things will happen for you my dear my peeps. Okay? Okay. We should pray for our enemies authority our parents we should pray for our workers everyone basically don't just pray for yourself pray for the needy pray for everyone and god will bless you okay i hope you've loved this video and if you've done that please give this video a thumbs up support our sister share like comment 